shaved butts, shaved heads, and also males that are shaved belly with their ears. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the friendly ones. The lamb of one of the ones that was more or less a pet. Ain't you, hey? Hey? Looks a bit daggy, so the ears are looking very old. It's because she's actually getting quite old. Very old. A bit sunburned or something. They're Ten years old and they dropped dead. Isn't that right, hey? You got a stubby nose. That's no good. Hey? They've still got, sort of got dimple holes, even in the ewes, where, the, where they should have had horns. It's like the wool doesn't grow. Mmm. Friendly old pet. She'll be lucky to fly and make it another year or two. She's that old. She's like the equivalent of somebody who's about 90 years of age, which is why she doesn't look a million dollars. A lot of wool on you, haven't you, honey? in another month or so it will be shearing time and her wool's actually pretty shit to be honest and it looks alright but what you're really going for saying she's going to stay still pretty much is the wrinkles I don't know if you can see she's got quite large wrinkles well the closer the wrinkles are together the higher class the wool is and uh, She's got pretty big wrinkles, which might show up on the camera. But at the same token, this is probably only good enough for blankets, not for clothing. And as you go to the meat breeds, it's only good enough for carpet. And uh, your little lammies, because it's so thin, it, it's important that you can spin it and it holds together. And it sort of will all stick together and sort of string out. So you go... Like if I sure say around a neck here um, and I grabbed hold of, shaved it all off and it was just a big clump on the ground. I grab hold of one end and I pull it, the rest of it will sort of string along with it. Now that means it's very good to spin together and, you know, then go ahead and, and make stuff. But when you get little lambs and you end up with all these little, you know, pissy little bits that are only blooming very short... Um, which is what you get, obviously, when they haven't grown much wool because they're only young, like this dude here. Um, that sort of stuff is only good, basically, for blooming quilt filling and dunas and yeah, the sort of stuff you might stuff in a mattress because it won't actually hold together and it won't actually knit properly. Whereas when you've got a bit of length, like our old friend here, we got there. Oh, it's about... Yeah, about an inch and a half. Then you've got a bit of a chance that it's all going to wind together, but you've got about another... It's usually in the December before Christmas that we do it, so they get another... I don't know, it's that work out for uh, ten weeks or something before we go in with a big shear. Mmm. I know sheep won't sit still like this. Most sheep will be scared of you, but this is what happens when we're growing up. And we feed you all the vegetable scraps, isn't it, hey? <laughs> Gee, she looks flaming pretty rough on it, actually. And before you say neglect, realise that this thing is probably around about 90 years old in human years. So you can't really expect a pretty face at that age. Mm. There's a... I believe this is one of our young rams? Yep. So generally speaking, they're very flighty like that. And they've got some decent horns. And uh, <laughs> if you grab a hold of the horns, he'll shake his head like hell to get you off. And uh, also a lot more solid body frame. And they grow a lot bigger. And if he was to have his nuts taken off, he would never get to that size at all. He'd be lucky to even be two-thirds the size, maybe only not a great deal more than half the size. But... Uh, yeah. 
it has a hell of a difference on the growth just by leaving the balls on them because of that extra testosterone. You may be able to see the odd nick and cut. It's just the way it goes, not much you can do about it. And the thing is with these, if you cut them, the skin will actually pull together within the space of two or three days. No stitches, it'll pull together on its own. It's quite remarkable how um, it does it. This isn't mulesing. This is classed as crutching. And uh, it's basically a head, dick and ass shave. And uh, some of these little guys like this one here, he's had a hell of a good shave around the head. He would have been wool blind and a few of these were, uh, as I showed in a previous video. So, yeah, it works out. It's, oh, we've got, like, we got like three or four little lambs. I don't know if you see that little one there. His little tiddler. He didn't get done because, I mean, he's... I should actually show him because they actually come out like hair first. And then there's wool, but the hair is actually tall in the wool, just when they're really little, like that. Uh, I might get up close to him and grab hold of him and show you. It um, works out not including these four lambs are probably about that size. We've got 203 uh, just here and in the yard across there, and there's some hiding in the back of this thing. This was originally made for pretty much exactly what we've done here today but um, had a guy come in and it makes it a whole lot quicker and a lot less bullshit. Oh no, actually yeah, that's... No, I think it is for what we've done today, yeah. Yeah, it was. In this post here, you mount the engine for the shearing plant on that thing there and we had a... it's got a loop on the top and we used to... Like have a pulley system, we'll pull it up. Um, yeah, but, uh, it's easy just to get somebody else to uh, rock up and do it flat out as opposed to us fumble around because the guy has been doing it for more than 20 years. He's a shearer, so. Hmm, so anyway, now everyone can see and they don't have dirty asses. You don't want to sell wool with dirty ass in the wool because it's then you're selling product that's like <laughs> contaminated basically with shit. I have seen like some of these dirty asses, um, some of the real bad stuff that's just drowning in shit. I've seen it sold for as little as 20 cents a kilo which works out 14 US cents for 2.2 pounds. It's almost worthless, but when you look at it, if you were actually to compress it, you're selling, it's more than 50% shit. <laughs> and in some cases like that, it's actually better. That was sort of like some of the stuff my uncle sold and whatnot was like that, but in those cases, in some cases, it's so much bullshit to sell it that it's easy just to throw it straight in the blasted bin. Um, but uh, we made an effort to pull out the worst of the shit and it won't sell for a great deal because it's still, you know, contaminated with a fair bit of shit and piss residue and everything else. But uh, the stuff that come off the heads is surprisingly clean, so that's almost going to be top grade sort of stuff. But it's not really long necessarily because it's only where the wool starts to grow, so it grows a lot shorter. Um, I'm going to show you this little baby one over there. Okay. I'm going to set it up in my legs here because if I put it on the ground it will kick like hell. See a little bits of hair there and there? That's where the horns would have come out. They actually get little tufts of hair. Uh, this is a little female. The legs... There's a handful of merinos I've seen that actually got wool on the legs but usually they've got hair. And uh, some breeds have a bit of hair. Uh, a bit of wool on the legs, um, below the knee, obviously. It's, uh, now it's hard to see with a bit. It's a little bit of hair just there on the end of the wool. It's only really generally seen when they're quite young. And some are far, far, far worse than others. I've seen ones that look like a flaming small dog. There's so much hair you can't even see the wool. This one's actually pretty good. She's just got... Oh, uh, it's a bit there. 
Yeah, I don't know if you can see that against my finger. Probably can't, but there's a bit of hair there. Now, Rob, buddy, hey? You're a picture of health, aren't you, hey? Except for a little bit of snot in your nose there. They're not completely brown eyed either. When they're young. It's sort of like a green, dark greenish sort of a thing. Mmm, a bit like me cats. Except you kick a lot more and you eat. You're nice, don't you? <laughs> I meant the eye colour. Mm. Oh, yes, and to tell age, and they're going to like this. It's got to do with the amount of teeth they have. And as I showed once before, no top teeth. No top teeth at all. Just bottom teeth. At your age, they're pretty sharp, aren't they? And they're pretty good. And they always get grass stain on the teeth. It's so weird. Mm. She'll have some grinding teeth up here as well. You know, I'll let you go and watch this. If we run. Still got the tail on her and all that, but that'll... Uh, Probably change at a later date. Anyway, I think I've explained quite a bit of stuff. As I said, these merinos are a wool breed. When you get the meat breed, they're way bigger and the wool is just crap. Really crap. Um, <laughs> There's a particular really good meat breed that they are self-shedding and the wool comes off itself. But it sort of starts to come off and it feels itchy to them. So what they do is they itch against the fence. And there's so much wool up against the fence, because I talked to a guy who bred them, so much wool against the fence, you literally got to go out with like box cutters and cut all the wool off the fence. <laughs> and of course you can't sell shit like that because it's all full of grass and what are you going to do? Go and pick up like walk over 10 acres and pick up all this little bits and pieces like it's uh, basically worthless but the sheep in question is, is ones that hit fences like an angry, angry pig and uh, grow shockingly fast and they're quite a good uh, flavour meat and uh, yeah yeah this sort of Specific breeds for specific specific things. Um, a lot of them have got origins and origins and traditions. But these are actually Australian breed, uh, and of course, when push comes to shove, these can handle hot weather far far better than uh, than say British sheep would that have you know. These have been acclimatised because they've been here for 20 plus generations, you know. So. Uh, actually probably more than that to come to think of it but average sheep will reproduce at about two or three years old times that by 200 years of being in Australia and of course you get your own breeds that are completely climatised and uh, very good with set environment because those that aren't get bred out or just drop dead because they can't handle it and, uh, and that's what gives you the selective breeding to give you the animal that suits the climate best Right. <laughs> anyway.